Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Christ our Lord. Welcome to worship. It's Easter Sunday, and we're so glad that you are joining us as we celebrate this holy day. I want to encourage you to stay with us to the very end of the service. We have some special music planned, and it continues all the way to the end of our worship service. You can also connect with us on Facebook as we have the last couple of weeks with a post or a picture. Make sure that you tag uh, First United Methodist Church Gastonia. And maybe this week, the picture that you want to share is of a cross that reminds you of resurrection. And now let us join together in worship. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. you to join with me and with the history of the church who said the Apostles Creed as an affirmation of faith on this Sunday on Easter Sunday let's say what we believe together I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
first reading comes from Colossians in the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi, boys and girls. Happy Easter. I hope you're ready for our children's time. And some of you this week, we played a little game and we had an egg and we filled that egg with one thing and we wrote clues so we could try and guess what was in the egg. And if, if you haven't done that, that's okay. You've got plenty of time. You can get an egg and put something in it and keep it a secret and then let everyone try and figure out what's in that. So I brought my egg this morning and I wanted to share with you what was in my egg. So I'm going to give you my three clues. Okay. So the first clue is that it is a reminder of something that lasts forever. Okay, so it's a reminder of something that lasts forever. This is like a reminder egg, and it's a reminder of something new, and it's a reminder of the greatest gift ever. So three things, something new that lasts forever, that's the greatest gift ever. So I'm gonna open mine up and show you what's in here, okay? It's empty. Did I forget it? No. The reason it's empty is because it's a reminder. It's a reminder that the tomb was empty. And that is the important part of our Easter story, is that we serve a risen Savior, that he is risen, that he went to the cross for us. But the important part is that the tomb was empty, that he is risen, that God had a plan. So the reason we played this little game, though, is it was exciting and it was fun for us to, like, share what was in our egg. And I know you guys were excited and were, like, ready to tell people and wanted them to guess what your clues were. And you were so ready to open that egg and show them what was inside. And that's how I want us all to be. I want us all to want to open up our hearts and share what God has given us. So after the service today, I want you to just find someone that you can maybe send a message to or FaceTime or Zoom and let them know about God's love. But if you'll um, pray with me and then we'll uh, wrap up. Father, thank you that, that we have hope because you sent Jesus and he is risen. And the tomb is empty. And help us to be like that tomb and our egg and open up and just share your love with all those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Easter, friends.
prepare to go to God in prayer, I invite you to think about your prayer request today. What joys and concerns are on your heart that you would like to lift to God? We continue to publish our prayer list and the weekly e-blast, and those are names that we lift on behalf of our congregation and community to God. You also have an opportunity to share if you feel comfortable publicly on the comment section if you have joys or concerns, and you're welcome to share those privately with your pastors and your staff. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, your spirit abides with us this day and always. On this holy day of Easter, we give you thanks from the bottom of our hearts for the great gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh, became one of us, lived and walked among us, and who taught us that the greatest love is to give up oneself, which is what he did. And then, O oh God, you raised him back to life, conquered death, conquered sin, and said, now there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from your great love and your son, Jesus. On this Easter Sunday, we celebrate that and we cling to that faith. We trust that there is nothing that can separate us from you. There is no sickness. There is no loneliness. There is no brokenness. Not even death can keep us apart from you. For in you there is love, there is life, there is victory. We remember, God, that first Easter, which began in darkness and quiet as Mary went to the tomb. We trust that you enter the quiet and the darkness and the painful places in our lives, and that you can also transform those into healing, wholeness, and life. We offer you, God, prayers of thanksgiving for the joys and the blessings you have given to us. And we also, God, lift to you prayers of intercession for our brothers and sisters who are in great need this day. We trust that you hear all of these prayers, that you respond to each and every need, and that you hold your children close now and always. We offer this and all of our prayers in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus. And together we lift our voices in the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to the time in our worship when we talk about giving. Uh, this is a time that we don't shy away from because God has given us his best in Jesus Christ. We have an opportunity to give. Because of your generosity, our church has been able to do things like these offerings over the internet on Sundays. We've been able to Zoom, our small group meetings. In other words, we've been able to continue being church. Thank you so much. We are, as many of you know, coming to the end of our weaving campaign this April. During this month, we're finishing up our gifts. We have pledged $5 million to our new building. We're so grateful for your generosity. You'll be hearing about ways that we'll retire the remaining debt in weeks and months to come. But we really just want to thank you for what you do to keep our church going financially, for your prayers, for your presence, for the many ways you love God through First United Methodist Church. Ways you can give are listed on your screen now. You can mail in a check or give online. You can set up a, a way to give routinely uh, through automatic check drafts. If that's something you would like to do, you can call our business office about that. But during this time, when we think about ways we can offer ourselves to God, we have the privilege of getting to hear a beautiful anthem by folks in our church who are so gifted. Thank you for giving of yourselves to God's glory. 
because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite us to pray together. Most holy God, pour out your spirit on this time of proclamation through word. We thank you for the joy of this day. And even under these unusual circumstances, we pray that we may fully live into the Easter promise that you provide for us. We love you and pray that you will work in this time. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. During this time of being quarantined, we're all at at different places. And I want us to consider uh, about Easter today, what it means to really be in the midst of something, but to be called out of that. We are all in the midst of this stay-at-home order. So what is it that has sort of kept you in the game during this time? What is it that's kept you going during this time of having to stay at home? I confess to you that uh, I joined evidently millions of others this week by staying in by watching the Tiger King, uh, the train wreck that is the Tiger King on Netflix actually made me feel better about my life, but it was interesting to get invested in something like that so I would stay active, so I would stay in what we're going through. I watched all the episodes. Uh, Too often I'm a person that stays in something by being invested in what I do instead of who God created me to be. So this morning, I want us to think about what it means to be called out, to be called out by Jesus, to be called out to a future, not called out from trouble, but called out to a future. There is a difference. Easter means the savior of the world calls us to a future. How badly we need to hear that because we just want to be called out from this time and get things back to normal. But friends, we are here to proclaim there is a future with our Savior. Mary Magdalene is one of the ones who goes to the tomb in all of the Gospels. If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each of them says that a different person or a different group of people goes to the tomb on that first Easter morning. But Mary Magdalene is mentioned in all of them. And in John, interestingly enough, she is the one who stays. She stays in the moment. Uh, I love this scripture. It says, Peter and the one whom Jesus loved that we think means John, but we don't know for sure. But Peter and John run when Mary says, hey, they've taken the body of our Savior and we don't know where he is. They run, one of them goes in, one of them looks. It says the one whom Jesus loved believed, but as yet they did not know what the scripture meant that he must rise from the dead. And then it says they went to their homes. The greatest good news in the world. And they go, huh? and go to their homes. But Mary stays. Think about that. She stays in the moment. The scripture says she stayed outside of the tomb weeping. It's in the depth of her grief. In that moment that Jesus calls her out to a future. At first glance, we may think that Jesus calls her from her grief, but no, he calls her to a future. In our scripture reading this week that we're doing as a church and reading through the whole Bible, one day, I think it was Tuesday, we read from Exodus 
uh, chapters five through 10. And in Exodus, uh, it is a story about God calling Moses to go tell Pharaoh, 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 old baby, let my people go. And he is supposed to say that, but he doesn't say, let them go because they're in bondage. Over and over and over again, he says, let them go so that they can worship. They are not called from bondage. They are called to a future where they can worship their God. God's people were called out to a future. We are as well. We get so used to being called out from something. My uh, One of my big memories as a a teenager before I got my license in our neighborhood in Albemarle, all of the uh, pre-drivers got together at the end of a cul-de-sac on our bikes on Friday and Saturday night, and we would just talk and play, not doing anything bad. But unfortunately, where our house was, the garage door sort of looked down on that cul-de-sac, and I, my parents had the earliest curfew of any of my friends. I had to be home at 10. And if I wasn't home at 10, at 10.01, I would hear that garage door. And there, my daddy would be standing in his boxers and no teeth going, David, your mother says it's time to come home. And I was mortally embarrassed. But he would call me from that time to come home. We get used to that. It's, it's the difference of being called to a future. It's what Avery read about in the book of Colossians, to set your minds on higher things, not the things of the earth, to be called to a future. Easter means you and I, even in the midst of a pandemic, are called to a future. So let's consider that for a moment. Because here's the kicker, because of Easter, we are actually called by name as individuals. This isn't just, hey, Gastonia, hey, First Church. This is, hey, Bob, Sue, David, Alyssa, each person you are called to a future. All of us have stories. All of us have stories of being called by name. That's how we know that it means something. My mother, until the day she died, I knew I was in trouble when she would say, David, Harold, and then it could be any number of things. But I knew that that meant business when she called me by my name, David, Harold. You see, this scripture Mary's future started when Jesus, after she thought him to be the gardener, said to her, Mary. It was then that he knew who it was. And what I love about this is this is real. It doesn't say like the Brady Bunch episodes I've been watching on Sunday afternoons. Uh, they have the Brady Brunch on Sundays. Anybody that wants to watch it on me TV, best TV on TV. But on the Brady Bunch, anytime there's a problem, everything is resolved and they all live happily ever after. Folks, this is real life. She is called not to live happily ever after. She's called to action. She's called to tell the disciples and share the message. That's our call. We are called to a future by name in order to share the message. Uh, I remember this week we were filming, we've been doing a lot of that, we were filming for uh, Easter Sunrise. Uh, Alyssa, our wonderful Communications and Family Life Center director, wanted to be sure that we actually did it authentically. So we were coming early on Tuesday morning and I pulled up Oakland Avenue to park my car to come in uh, that side door. And I saw a friend, I've been here eight years and we've made friends with people downtown. And uh, there's a fellow who has had a rough time over my eight years here. He's 
had some good days and bad days, but we have sort of lived through some time where I had to say, I'm sorry, we can't help you anymore. And I saw it and I thought, oh, I got to get in there and get this filmed. I do not have time to deal with him. Forgive me, but that's what I thought parked my car and tried to get across and get in the door before he could say anything. He was crossing Franklin Boulevard and I heard, David! He called my name. I had to stop. And I walked up to him. He walked to me. We kept our distance. But he said, I know you can't help me. I don't need anything. What I need you to do is to pray with me because I have to go today, I have a decision because of some outstanding warrants, I can spend 57 days in jail, or I can be on probation with an ankle bracelet for two years. What would you do? And I told him, look, I, I don't even want to say because I, I have no idea. I, I haven't been in those shoes and I don't, I don't want to influence your decision. I hope you'll talk with a lawyer. And he said, yeah, I'm talking to my lawyer today, but I tell you what, will you pray with me? And right in the middle of Oakland Avenue, we stopped early on Tuesday morning and prayed together. You see, God was calling me <laughs> through my homeless friend to a future that reminds me that I'm not just stuck in a moment where all I do is try to give people something that they need that may help them for a little bit. I was called to a future where there really is a hope. He understood it better than I did, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. He calls us by name to a future. That is really the message of this Easter, isn't it? You and I, as individuals and as a community, are called out to a future, to a promise, to a hope. We read of it in Jeremiah 29, 11. God promises us that future. Please don't settle at just being called out from the moment or from trouble, or from a pandemic. It doesn't end there. We are called by name to a future with our Savior. Friends, it is not about getting back to normal. It's about claiming the future that God has for us. So stay in the moment so that we can hear Jesus calling out to us for a promised future. Happy Easter. May God bless us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the promise of a future. Forgive us for being so into the moment that we forget the future you provide for us. Help us to claim that and to know that, and to live as resurrection people. We love you and thank you for the privilege of being your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. The best good news I know is that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it, but we get to leave the confines of this worship and go out and share his love with others. Please don't leave. Our choir is offering the Hallelujah Chorus. It's a great tradition of this church, and we are so blessed by their amazing gifts. May you go forth in God's peace. Amen. Thank you.